a very cold uh, Minnesota. How it's for you here with the sun? And, uh, <laughs> I feel sorry for these people that are getting really hot. You don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. You can go and drink over there <laughs> if you want to. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no, see, he wants to go drink over there, right? Yeah, when they, they want to hear you. They want to hear you live. So thank you so much for being us with here today. Uh, so Tom likes, uh, has an extensive career between the private sector and the public sector. Uh, Morgan Stanley and working with the government. And today, uh, you are new here. How many months like here? Almost a year. Almost a One year. year. How you like it so far? Yeah, it's uh, you know it's not it's, this place is not for the faint of heart. This is a tough place to work. Uh, not here, of course. It's kind of cool. Here's uh, amazing. But as you know, it's it's a complicated neighborhood. But yes, I thoroughly enjoy it. Amazing, amazing. So I, I will start with my first question. And uh, okay, so what what do you think? What, what are the biggest challenges realizing potential economic opportunities in Arab society in Israel through entrepreneurship and high tech? And what and what the U.S. Emb embassy doing to help? Well, first of all, I want to tell you how cool this place is. And congratulations, guys. Thank Give them a round of applause, please. Because this is as cool as it gets. I thought I was in Silicon Valley when I walked in here, okay? This space is spectacular. This program is what it's all about. It's about education, and it's about capital, it's about entrepreneurship, it's about experience. And this, this physical plant represents all of it. I'm told, not long ago, this was not a great building with a lot of, not a lot of great stuff going on in here. This is cool. So I am just, I could not be happier to be here. Uh, this is, um, on my first trip, to, uh, when I first arrived here, the first uh, thing I went to is Aqua. And my first meeting I did here was with Arab business leaders. And my staff was like, why do you want to see the Arab business leaders? You're the ambassador to Israel. Aren't there some Jews you should meet with? And I said, yes, there'll be plenty of Jews I'll meet with. But on the other hand, I want to understand from the Arab community in Israel, which makes up 22% of the population, what do they need? What are the things that this community needs? And the biggest thing that they talked about is technology and technology entrepreneurship and education and money. Okay? So this is no different than the Jewish community. It's no different than the American community. It's no different than every entrepreneur I know. They need two things. They need an opportunity, just a shot. All you want is a shot of an opportunity. And then you have an idea. And then you need to take your idea and you need to get some cash to fund your idea. And then you need to be around other people who have ideas and they kind of grow on each other. And even if your idea fails, you're around other entrepreneurs. Yeah. Arab entrepreneurs, is Jewish entrepreneurs, Druze entrepreneurs. It doesn't. It's irrelevant to me. What's irrelevant is to make sure organizations like this exist to create this ecosystem that will drive relationships and drive the economy of the Arab population in Israel up the food chain. But more importantly, create businesses and make opportunities for families and individuals and make a little cash in the meantime and be able to replow that money back into society. Amazing. So I don't know if you know, but there is a common. There's something in common between uh, between here and Silicon Valley. They both have valley. Here's what Valley Ara, and there is Silicon Valley. So we want to turn in this place as well to a place where we have a lot of companies uh, opening their space here. So and all. And this takes me to my second question: What makes Israel a, a, a startup nation? And there's a lot of startups. Is the fact that maybe all the American companies, all the tech giants came and opened here uh, R&D centers, uh, spaces, and this was the real incubator where uh, university graduates went there, worked there, got to know and to deal with the cutting edge technologies, what made them innovate later on. Unfortunately, so far, Arab community and Arab society here, it's 22%. Uh, we are only 2% in, uh, in, in, in this industry. How do you think we can make sure that to more diverse uh, through these American companies and also to convince in a way or another American companies to come and open in, in such a place or to support such a place? Well, first of all, this is my passion. Um, I take a lot of grief from some of my friends uh, in Israel about um, how much time I spend on this, okay? American companies that are here 
should be hiring more Arabs in their R&D and in their sales and in their opportunities. And we're getting there, okay? We're getting there. We're making progress, but nowhere near enough. And I, I, I go to the Startup Nation all the time, and I bring all the American companies together. And I am constantly talking about this. In fact, they don't even want to take my phone calls sometimes because I am holding them accountable. I know what the populations of their employee populations are, and I hold and, and I basically put them up. By the way, no different than we do in the United States, by the way. We have different um, underrepresented uh, populations in the United States, which we did when I was at Morgan Stanley. We did this every day. So this is not just about Israel. It's about the United States, it's about the UK. There are underrepresented populations that need to have opportunities. And the way you get opportunities is you hire more people. If you wanna, if you wanna hire more Arabs, you better hire more Arabs, which means more people feel comfortable coming to a company that have people that look like them, right? You want them to feel comfortable in this environment. Google came here, and I know you just left. Uh, my friend Ruth Pratt, who is the CFO of Google Worldwide, sat next to me at Morgan Stanley, and she called me six months ago and said, I want to come visit you. I said, come visit me. Everyone comes visits me, but the only thing I require is, is you bring your checkbook. And, uh, and to her credit, she brought her checkbook and gave $25 million for the sole purpose of education within the underserved communities, especially the Arab communities, both here in Israel uh, and in the West Bank. And the idea is to provide people the educational skills they need to succeed in this business and then go do whatever they want to do. But this community is no different than any other community. You need the opportunity. That's why something like this is so impressive, because you're creating a, a single point of entry where people can work together, get educated together, and get opportunity together. At the end of the day, it's about education and it's about capital. If you have the education, you will then be able to hopefully, through your connections, get some capital for your ideas and for your entrepreneurship. Amazing. And uh, I mean, as you can see, very passionate entrepreneurs, uh, engineers, and people who want to be in this, uh, in this industry. What's your... Uh, Okay, so uh, and one additional thing, I the word this word was opened for me when I was in a fellowship in the states, and also in my team, another three three people, uh, Yara, Bisan, and Sandra also had the opportunity to study there, which is an eye opening. It uh, it show you the whole uh, opportunities. First, what words of encouragement you have to the, our audience, to the member of Hasub, to the member of Hasub community, and also. What kind of opportunities do you think they can approach and so they can be also more a uh, part in the global ecosystem, not only here? Well, first of all, you got to take advantage of this stuff, okay? No one is going to lead you here. You've got to lead yourself. I tell people all the time, including my own kids, I can, I can show you opportunities. You've got to grab the opportunities. So this community is no different than any other community. You've got to see an opportunity like this and take advantage of it and make sure you get the opportunities to succeed. Number two, you are going to fail. Failure is what entrepreneurship is about. You cannot be an entrepreneur if you don't fail. If you do not take risks, you cannot succeed or get bitten by a bee. Um, but you have to basically, um, you have to basically be willing to put yourself out there, put yourself in an uncomfortable position, ask for things you never thought you'd ask for, and probably fail, and then you get up and do it again. You go for that interview you didn't think you could qualify for, you take that educational class you don't really want to do, or maybe can't afford, but you gotta take risks. The only way every rich person gets rich is they've taken risks, unless you inherited a lot of money. Unfortunately, some of you might have that problem, I don't. So you have to basically earn every dollar, but earn every opportunity. So I, my, my basic advice to everyone is, take advantage of this, Take advantage of any opportunity you have and make sure you understand if you don't take risks, you will not succeed. And it's frustrating. Being an entrepreneur or being in tech is frustrating. Everyone needs to just work as hard as they possibly can, take advantage of what's opportunity to push forward. Amazing. Grab the opportunity, guys. And on, in order to make more opportunities here, Sir Ambassadors asked me, how big is your budget? I told like it's maybe two million shekels. I am sure after this uh, 
uh, one on one, the budget will uh, grow exponentially so we can create more opportunities. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> great. So thank you so much. Yeah. Well, listen, let me tell you, I, listen, I was actually surprised uh, how much you've done with as little money as you've raised. I mean, to have a building like this and a program like this and the leadership like this, this is what you want. The kid's only 30 years old, okay? And he's got this cool untucked shirt and he looks really cool. And the reality of this is, is that this is what you need. Leadership matters, guys. Leadership matters, commitment matters, and opportunities are all yours. So I, I assure you one thing, I'm leaving here and getting on the phone and calling my office about making sure that this organization is somewhere that the American government continues to buy. We, we've already given them some money, nowhere near enough money that you need, so I am more than happy to make sure that I put my voice in, okay? More money, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Let's have a selfie with the audience. Okay, what, but more importantly, I want to I want to give you this. Is actually, the first one I've given. Hang on, I got something for you. Forget that for a second. I want to give you my very fancy. It's called a challenge coin, and and one of the things that I care about um, is uh, representing the United States of America, right? We we is a huge honor to be the ambassador to Israel, and it's important for me, as I say all the time. The only way we're going to keep the peace here is giving people the opportunity. So here's my challenge coin to you. And I, this is what you do. You hold it in your hand. That's my challenge, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas Knight and Rabbi Ziyu, the article